Welcome, everybody, back to Washington Football Maniacs with your host, Greg Sykes, and myself, the new co-host, Brandon Scott. I am a co-host over at Locked On Wizards, and I am very excited to come on board and talk some Commanders football with my guy, Greg Sykes. So tonight, we are going to talk about some over and unders on the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, there's a lot more optimism this year with Eric bien at the helms as an offensive coordinator as opposed to <laughs> Turner. So well, let's jump right back into it. Um, we're going to start with quarterback. Now, Sam Howe, this is year one of the Sam Howe era. Um, I got to be honest, I'm very intrigued by his skill set, his arm, his mobility, um, his IQ. So um, real quick before we jump into over and unders, what, what is your general opinion about Sam Howe? Well, you know, I mean, the thing is, so far with Sam Howe, um, you know, they talked about last year, Sam Howe being the, uh, the still of the draft. And, you know, the thing is, we haven't seen much uh, to really go by, but what we have seen from Sam Howell, it's been all good, right? I mean, you know, if you go back to preseason last year, he had pretty decent preseason. Um, he, he did a lot of good things. He, he certainly didn't do anything to, to really question his, his pick. Uh, I mean, you know, fifth round draft pick. Uh, but then we get to see him, in the season and this was not a game that was a throwaway game for for the cowboys right i mean this was at the end of the season when the cowboys had everything to play for and they had all of their starters in um and sam howell came out there and he had the poise of a veteran quarterback and you know you could just see just little little things that i picked up on just how he moved you know within the pocket um yeah he did throw a pick but he came right back from that and i believe uh, it's been a while since i've seen the game but he came right back with a good drive uh, on that next drive so um you know the things i've seen with him has been really good and what i'm hearing out of ota so far has been positive so you know I, i think overall um i'm very excited about Sam Howell. Um, you know, I think it's time that this franchise gets behind a quarterback. They can, can definitely develop, um, you know, to me, t- retreads that we have tried to, to pick up. And, um, you know, and I, I'd say let's go for it. You know, why not? At this point, I know you may say, well, this is kind of a stupid thing to say, but what do you have to lose, right? I mean, go for it. If it doesn't work out, well, we're probably going to see some big changes, you know, with, with the uh, new ownership anyway. So let, let's just put all of our cards in and, and see what, what the young man could do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, he has the intangibles. You know, a lot of people expect, you know, when you look at franchise quarterbacks, first round picks. No, I mean, you. there's a long list of quarterbacks who have proven to be franchise guys who came in later rounds. I mean, you know, talking about. Tom Brady. I mean, what round did he come in? I'm just saying, you know, so him coming out of North Carolina, I'm very intrigued. Plus, he has no shortage of weapons. I mean, he is. He's got so many weapons around him. This is the top 10 receiving core. I mean, they're just their money. So looking at that, looking at the fact that, you know, just on the receiver side, you know, we just added another running back in the draft Um, over and under twenty five hundred yards passing this year for Sam. Howe. what do you think? I think it's over because. Honestly, uh, you said it, Brandon. I mean, look at all the weapons he has. I mean, the the weapons that we already know um, that is going to deliver for him. You know, uh, Terry McLaurin, uh, Jahan Dotson, uh, Curtis Samuel, who's kind of the switchblade knife type of of, of guy, uh, Swiss Army knife, I guess we would say. Um, and and of course. Um, you got Logan Thomas, who I've actually heard some good things coming out of OTAs, which is a good sign for that tight end position. And then you got some guys that we really didn't get to see a whole lot of last year that may emerge as well. Uh, and then you got the guys in the backfield um, who he could, you know, Antonio Gibson, guys like that. And, and we know that, you know, Brian Robinson is going to be the running back, but. Still, he's got weapons all over the place. I would say that I would almost be disappointed if he only threw for 2,500 yards. Uh, And that might be a bold statement, but, I mean, he's got the weapons around him. 
Oh, I mean, he's got weapons galore. I mean, <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. unreal. We have not seen this collection of talent as far as the offensive side of the ball in D.C. in a long time. So that is definitely refreshing, especially now that you have an offensive coordinator who knows what he's doing. You know, Turner just, ah, he was so stagnant. He was so predictable. He just, he, you know, he he stuck to his guns. He, he wasn't able to kind of adapt. And I think that, that was a downfall to kind of slow this offensive down, you know, this offense down last season. So, you know, Eric Benemy is a big pickup for this offense because, you know, we have the talent. Now we have the leadership, the vision on the offensive side of the ball. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm going over because I think that – I think the only thing to prevent that is, you know, struggles. You know, I, he's going to have his growing pains. But, yeah. you know, this is Ron Rivera's year to kind of, you know, it really behooves him to take a step forward because really you could say he's coaching for his job. So, yeah. you know, it maybe, you know, the defense is on point and, uh, you know, how struggles, maybe they put in Brissett for a little bit. Um, but I think that's the only factor, you know, if, if, if it is a key of trying to keep us competitive. But I'm, I'm all for giving him the reins, let him have those growing pains. And I think, look, his intangibles. I mean, he runs and he has vision. You know, when he runs, he's not just running to run. He runs with vision like a running back. You know, that's what I that's what I got out of the preseason game last year in the Cowboys game. And he's got the arm strength. You know, Tyler, Taylor Haneke was very, very popular in D.C. because of heart. Now, can you imagine if Taylor Haneke had Sam Howell's arm? I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he had the heart. You know, he just he kept us in a lot of games, but the arm strength was always an issue. So, yeah, I'm with you, man. I think over 25. I mean, if, if it's not over 25, I'd be very disappointed because, again, you know, the weapons. I mean, so um, we're going to get into some of the weapons right now. Um, obviously, we know what Terry McLaurin can do. I mean, he's just wow. In my opinion, top 10 receiver in the game right now. He just he has proven to be an under the radar draft signing for us because he wasn't drafted to be a number one receiver. I believe he was drafted to be a special teams player. So the fact that he's a number one guy, got his extension, playing on the level he is, very impressed by Terry McLaurin. Let's talk about his running mate, Jahan Dotson. Obviously, we saw the potential last season, but dealt with some injuries. Now, over and under 1,000 yards receiving. And, and keep in mind, you know, he's competing with Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, you know, you got Antonio Gibson. So there's a lot of people, that go, you know, they're going to distribute the ball around the field a little bit. What's over and under 1,000 receiving yards for John next year? Um, I, I think he's going to come close, but I think there's going to be some factors, uh, as you alluded to, um, can he stay healthy? I, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, right now, I think I would say a little under, but I don't think it's going to be under by a lot. Um, there's going to be so many weapons that Jahan, or I should say Sam Howell, uh, will be able to distribute the ball to that. Um, there just may be times where Dawson doesn't see the ball. And, and I think also it really depends on the chemistry that Sam Howe builds towards his receivers. Now, it may be to where we see, surprisingly enough, Terry McLaurin's numbers going down, Jahan Dawson's numbers going up because there's better chemistry between you know, Sam Howe and Jahan Dotson as opposed, as opposed to Terry McLaurin. Um, we'll really get a chance to see that a little bit more, certainly, you know, during the, the regular season. But but I would probably say right now it, it would probably be close. I would not be surprised if, you know, he's in the 800-yard range maybe. Um, and, again, a lot depends on if he can stay healthy. Yeah, I agree. Health is – Definitely name of the game for Jahan. But, you know, you hit another key factor, which is there's a lot of people that are going to be getting the ball in his offense. So you, you don't necessarily need him to be a thousand yard receiver. You know what I mean? We have so many weapons around and, that, and it, it, you, you're going to hear this a lot as far as our offense weapons, because, again, we have not had this amount of weapons on our offensive side for many years. I can't remember the last time we had as many weapons. I mean, you know, when we had Deshaun Jackson, um, Garcon, that was a good group. But again, you know, the same thing with Portis, Santana. But we didn't have three receivers who, quite frankly, could be a thousand yard receivers in their own offenses. So, yeah, I agree. I think he's going to be less, but it's not because of talent. It's because of so many people are going to need the ball. So I, I agree with that. Uh, let's get into Curtis Samuel, the one of the um, Swiss Army knives. Obviously, uh, with Eric Bieniemy, he's going to feature him a lot more running as opposed to just being a pass catcher um you over and under 1500 yards total yards for curtis samuel next year um 
I think that's kind of ambitious for, for Curtis Samuel. I mean, you're talking all purpose yards. Um, he could definitely, he, he has the potential. He could definitely do it. Um, I would probably say right now under, but again, I, I could definitely see him having at least a thousand, maybe 1200 all purpose yards. Um, you know, I think it depends on uh, do they put Curtis Samuel in as more of a, a third down feature? Um, I don't know if I can see that. I, I think that Eric Bieniemy is going to be uh, so much more uh, creative in his play calling that, you know, it's not like Scott Turner where, you know, you can almost know exactly who the personnel is going to be on third down. I think you're not going to see that with Eric B. Enemy. So I really think that um, with Curtis Samuel, uh, you will probably see him uh, be a mixed in uh, on, you know, other downs, first and second downs and stuff like that. Um, but I, I think right now, probably I, I would keep it closer to maybe a thousand, twelve hundred yards. And again, for Curtis, it depends on if he can stay healthy. I know that first year, uh, he was in Washington, of course. He, he barely played. Um, last year, we saw a little bit more of him. Um, so let, let's just see what he can do with Eric Bannemi. Um Again, you know, I think the enemy is just the key that unlocks the the potential with all of these guys. So, I mean, who knows? I'm, I'm being very uh, reserved just because of what I've seen out of these guys in the past. So I haven't, we haven't had the opportunity uh, to see a, a coaching talent um, uh, like we have with Eric. So, um, but I think right now I'd probably say maybe around thousand. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that, yeah, 1500 yards may be a little ambitious, but I think it's a goal to shoot for because, you know, again, his awesome offensive schemes, he's going to get the most out of Curtis Samuel. I mean, if you look at, you know, outside of Tariq Hill, you know, Kansas City, he didn't always have the best group of receivers, but he got the most out of them. And that's yeah. what you want to see. You know, if you can get the most out of guys who, quite frankly, aren't the top at the position, you know, you come into a situation in D.C. where you have three studs at wide receiver. And then, you know, if you had Deami Brown, who I expect that kind of, you know, he's always been on the fringe, you know, but you can argue four guys who can who can definitely play some football. So Eric Manning is going to get the most out of Curtis Samuel. So um, we're going to move on next to the running back. So we're going to talk about Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson. Now, start with Brian Robinson. Now, last year, Brian Robinson had a heck of a year. Um, yes, he did. You know, he had some issues off the field. Um, unfortunately, got shot, came back in record time, contributed, and he was just a dog, man. I mean, put his shoulder pads down, knocking people over. It was just incredible to watch him run the ball. Um is this a year that he's a thousand yard rusher over and under a thousand yards rushing for Brian Robinson? I think he's going to be over uh, because you could see that as the year progressed, as he got past that um, injury and he got back into the game, he got more comfortable. You start seeing each week he progressed and he got stronger and he was just like a bull rush, you know, I mean, um, you could really tell that if he had a, a complete full year last year, health wise, he probably would have went over a thousand yards last year, and that's with a what I call a shady offensive line. So, I think easily you're going to see Brian Robinson go over a thousand yards. Um, and I think Eric Bieniemy again, uh, I, maybe I'm singing his praise a little too quickly, but I just feel like he's going to recognize that we're going to have a good, strong running game. And that's something that Ron Rivera said before that he really wants to focus on um, is uh, running the ball more. Um, and I know that some fans kind of clapped on that because they're like, okay, this is too old school. But I, I really think you're going to see easily it's going to be over a 1,000 yards for Brian Robinson. I mean, he's just he, – he's, he's that good. I think he's really that special. Yeah, I agree. And if you look at last season, running the ball, when we ran the ball and we controlled the clock, we were a very successful team. You know, yeah. Scott Turner, he, but when he wasn't running the ball well, he, he just stopped. And that was a problem. You know, he was just, he was, you got to keep the running game going, you know, controlling the clock. You know, I'm looking back a couple of years that went against Tampa Bay. 
that whole fourth quarter, we ran the ball and controlled the clock. I yeah. mean, that is the key to football. You have to control the clock with the running game. So, yeah, I think if they emphasize running the running game in his offense, you're going to see this passing game really open up, man. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm very optimistic. Um, yeah. Obviously, being a skin slash football team slash commanders fan, you know, you <laughs> Over the years, you know, whatever you wanna... we're going to be called next, right? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you don't try to be too optimistic because you always find yourself heartbroken. Yeah. You know, we've had talented quarterback coming in here, and, and time and time again, it just it ended in failure. You know, your McNabs, your Jason Campbells, you know, your Alex Smiths, um, Brad Johnson. I mean, it's many names. So, this I'm, I'm very optimistic because this guy is not look, not a lot of people in the league have love for their commanders. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. been we've been picked 30th. Out of all teams, which I think is crazy. I mean, come on, this we're not that bad, but I think we are a sneaky good team because he's got the intangibles. This weapon, this oh, I can't say enough about this weapon. The weapons he has, man. I mean, it's we just and now we have an office of quarter that knows how to utilize them. You know, can you imagine Eric being in me last year? C- completely different offense. You know, Scott Turner again was just so stagnant, so predictable. So uh, we're going to get into the final player, uh, get into Antonio Gibson. Now, obviously, he was our lead back for a couple of years, but fumble issues, especially fumbling in your own red zone. And um, but now they're going to use him more and, you know, passing down, straight down back over and under 750 total yards for Antonio Gibson. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to go out and, and make a bold statement for Antonio Gibson. I think he is going to be. Uh, Washington's version of Kareem Hunt um, for Eric Bieniemy. I think that that Antonio Gibson fits that mold. Um, which, incidentally, I read an article earlier in the week where, I mean, I don't know if it was true or not, where Washington was interested in Kareem Hunt. But I'm like, you don't need him. We got Antonio Gibson, and I think Antonio Gibson has that ability and like you said he's going to be used more in the passing downs and and things like that i think that he easily he easily could probably even get up to a thousand yards i think he's going to be used a lot more than what people uh will imagine um which will be kind of interesting because uh when you start to to look at that it's like how are you going to you know if you're going to see washington kind of go into this pass first offense, even though Ron Rivera did say they want to run the ball more. How is it that Brian Robinson's going to hit that thousand yard mark, but then Antonio Gibson is going to, you know, get to that thousand yards. It, it's going to happen. I don't know how, but it's going to happen. Um, I think that uh, Eric B is going to see that um, while that I don't, I think we still have some question marks at tight end. I think he's going to understand that, and he's going to start utilizing guys like Antonio Gibson a lot more. Um, he's going to be that creative. So I really think Antonio Gibson is going to play a very, very big role in this offense this year. Uh, might be one of the the bigger offensive weapons we have this year than Dare I say Terry McLaurin? I can't believe I just said that. Someone needs to slap me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I completely agree. I think AG is going to have a breakout year, man, because <sighs> y'all going to get tired of me <laughs> saying this. Just the weapons, man. <laughs> I mean, the weapons. <laughs> the weapons. I mean, you again, just like Curtis Sam, you have a guy who can catch, he can run. It's just he, the sky's the limit for this offense. It really is. And that's what that's why I'm so optimistic. You know, I mean, obviously, um, next episode, we're going to cover the defense. But offensively, wow. I mean, just so many weapons in this offense. And like I said, I think that Sam Howell is a very not getting one start, but I think he's going to be slept on because I don't think enough people outside of our fan base really knows his intangibles. Because, you know, I went to the preseason game last year and just the preseason game, his intangibles, you know, his IQ, his football IQ shows, you know. It just he, he's he's going to be good. He's really going to be good, and it's it's going to be hard to really fail when you have these many weapons as a fail safe. You know what I'm saying? So it's just I'm very optimistic about this group. So um, before we roll tonight, um, over and under ten wins for the Washington Commanders next year. Well, you know they have a very tough schedule. 
So, it, it, but in past seasons, we've seen this on paper. It's like, this is a brutal schedule. They're not going to win more than three games. And then they wind up having a pretty decent season because you see teams that were supposed to be good that suddenly are, are empty shells of themselves and they're not as good as what they appear on paper or what whatnot. Um, it's it's difficult to say, but I, I would probably say it might be closer to nine games. Um, I don't know if they're going to hit that ten game mark, but I would probably say, unfortunately, if it's only nine games, it's probably going to be it that you see for Ron Rivera. Um, I hope though that that would not be the case for Eric Bieniemy, and maybe that there is some sort of um, you know plan in place that um, Eric Benemy gets elevated. Now, you know, I'm already putting him as the head coach already, and he hasn't even – we haven't <laughs> even seen what he's going to do yet. But, you know, he's such a talent at coach that I'd hate to, like, you know, give him up after one season. So maybe there might be some, some plan in place for that. I don't know. I mean – this is where I become a little pessimistic because I don't want to get my hopes up too high. Um, there's a lot of good things and that we will cover in the next couple of uh, videos. Um, a lot of, of good talent on both sides of the ball. No reason why that this team, this team can't play to their best of their abilities um, against anybody in this league. Um, but it, it's more than just the players on, on the, um, on the, the football field, it's also the coaches. And Ron Rivera's got to do better as a situational head coach. There were a lot of times where he just really flat out failed uh, last year in situational football. And I hate that because I love the man. I really honestly love the man. Um, but he, he, there were times where just really questioned why he made certain decisions and certain decisions, I think, cost us some games. So he's got to be on his best. Um, it's not just the players. We know Eric Bannemi is going to have to be on his best. Jack Del Rio is going to have to have his defense ready. So it's going to take a full effort uh, for this team to get to 10 wins. Um, I don't think it's impossible, but it's going to be very challenging, I think, for this team to, to do that. But I think it's going to be fun to watch him play. I definitely feel that. Yeah, I agree. But I'm going to say this. Um, I'm going over 10 wow. or above. And the really? reason I say that is looking at the NFC, this, this is how I look at it. The NFC got weaker. Um, Philadelphia, yeah, Philadelphia does scare you as much as I hate to say that. But, I mean, they got a lot of weapons. But, you know, that's that next year after, you know, going to the Super Bowl, how do they respond? You know, um, Dallas, I think, is not better than last year. Yeah, they, they, they picked up Brandon Cooks, but, you know, Ezekiel Elliott is gone, but I, I, they're, not, they're not as good as last year. Um, the Giants, a lot of questions. Sa we all know that Saquon Barkley is always injury away. Um, same thing with Darren Waller. You know, Darren Waller, look, by all means, he has a lot of talent, but he's always injury away. And Daniel Jones, I think the league is figuring him out. You know, I, I think he's a little underrated, as much as I hate to say that, but yeah. – this, I think the NFC got weaker. You know, LA's just not what they used to be. You know, they got rid of Jalen Ramsey. Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers is gone. Minnesota, yeah. this, they just um they just waved Dalvin Cook. I mean, I just don't see a real dominant team. I mean, San Francisco, you can say, yeah, I get that. But you know, New Orleans, they have growing pains. I mean, you know, you got Carr under now. So how the how's Carr gonna do in New Orleans? You know, Alvin Kamara, he's not the same guy anymore. So there's a lot of questions in the NFC. I think that if there's ever a time to be that sneaker team in the NFC. Because nobody's really looking at us. And, you know, there's always been a lot of hate for us. Yeah, you know, and we and you know, we always been an underdog. It's just what well, we've always been, and that's cool. We play better when we're underdog. So it's Love all it. good. Yeah. Love it. So I think we're a sneaker. I think it's gonna be over 10 games. Or you no, know, I'm gonna say 10 or above. Now, 10, I, <laughs> I think more realistic. I don't know if I'm venturing 11 to 12 yet, but I think this is a much improved team. Now, you know, like you said, we're gonna cover defense because there's a lot of intriguing pickups looking at Emmanuel Forbes. Um, even though I was a Christian Gonzalez guy, I'm just saying, but Manuel Forrest. A lot, a lot of us a, were. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but he's a ball hawk. So I, yeah. I do like what I see in OTAs from Emmanuel Forrest. But we're going to cover defense next episode. But um, before we roll, man, um, you have anything else you want to cover, man? Well, I mean, just uh, 
you know, I, I will just finish it up by saying, you know, I think it's definitely possible uh, with the win total. And I, I think uh, two, two things, two deciding factors on that. Um, how well have we rebuilt the offensive line? Uh, because it all, you know, winning starts in the trenches on, on both sides of the football. Uh, so has that offensive line improved from last year and is it healthy and do we have depth? Um, if the answer is yes on all of the above, then that offense will soar. Um, and the second thing on that is, can we get off to a fast start? And we have not gotten off to fast starts, as you know, in the past few seasons under Ron Rivera. So if we can get off to a fast start in this season, um, let's say we're three and one or four and one or something like that, then uh, at that point, I would say there's no reason why this team can't win more than 10 games. So it really depends on that first quarter of the season. Um, what are they looking like? If they're, you know, if they're two and two, um, you know, two and three, something like that, it's going to be a little iffy. Uh, but I think if they're, you know, if they're four and one, uh, then I, I'll start being a believer at that point. Yeah. I mean, it behooves him to punch him in the mouth at the gate because if they start punch slow. Punch out. Yes. This is going to be starting to be, you know, talking about him, you know, maybe losing his job. I like Ron Rivera too, you know. I, you know, the military background. My, I'm an army guy, seven years, so I, you know, I always loved the army background. But um, so I, I definitely wish him well as a coach. But again, you can't. He, he's coaching for his job, so you got to see an improvement this year. So again, we're gonna go ahead and call it tonight. Um, again, I, you know, I appreciate you, Greg, for allowing me to come on co-host with you, man. I'm very excited to cover this season. Watch Commanders football on Washington Football Maniacs with you. So, again, appreciate everybody. Like, subscribe, comment below. Definitely let us know how we did. And, again, appreciate everybody. And everybody have a blessed night and peace. Peace. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.